All right, welcome back. Um, it's been a, been a minute since I've done a video. I've been pretty busy remodeling the inside of our house. I've been working on the trailer as much as I can. I'm uh, almost done with all the plumbing. I'm about halfway through the electrical. I'm gonna flip you around and kind of show you what I've been doing. I have, have not done as much of a detailed video as I've wanted to, but hopefully we can get some, uh, some information today. So I'm gonna flip you around here and we'll kind of show you what we've been working on um, as far as plumbing, sink, shower, and then I'll kind of block through the electrical as well. So give me a second, we'll flip you around. All right, here's the mess that I call plumbing. Um, uh, first start off, we've got our little porta potty there. We'll be kind of up in the V. I decided not to do a black tank. I just want to stay with the uh, freshwater tank and the gray tank. Let me kind of walk you through, um, kind of start to finish. So in the last video, I think I'd shown you that I had the tank set. Um, now we've got kind of everything set up. So we've got fresh tank, line coming out, filter, and my water pump. Water pump is going to go um, across the bottom here. So I've, I've got an interior shower, but I also said I want to do an exterior shower as well. Uh, main reason is we're outside the dunes and I want to spray off, but I really don't want to fire up the shower. I want to spray the machines off or you know whatever whatever needs to be you know washed out. Shower, we, we have that option. Um, so you can see the the uh, line T's there, the cold water line continues across the bottom. The sink there as it comes up off the bottom. I haven't done this yet, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna tee into these these uh, these two lines here for my sink setup. I've got the fittings, just haven't done that yet. But that wire or that excuse me, that water line keeps going. The tees up there. Tee will come up. Take you, out of, take you out of here, and then tee into the, the back of the shower here, which I've not mounted completely yet. So you have to do some fittings, but um, just, just do some fun, some final fitment. Get that thing to sit there perfectly. But that water line. Continues to go up and around, and it curves around that front of the V. It comes up to our instant propane hot water heater. So, obviously, comes in there, comes up, and then hot water comes out. I set this here, um, so we're gonna adjust some shower real easy. But we'll come back to that in a second. Hot water comes back, and it follows that same that same path. Goes around, tees up there again. Same for the shower. It runs back to outdoor shower, which would be teed um, up in here to connect the sink. So it's kind of like the way I ran the water lines. Um, the fill, our our fill in the vent there, comes down into fresh tank. We've got the vent there, and then um, bottom of the sink will. I haven't done this yet, but I'll be uh, connecting that directly to the gray tank. I went with um, this, I believe, I believe it's Camco. The Camco, um, you know, uh, uh, set up there, to connect directly to the bottom of the sink, and then that'll go, again, that'll go directly to the gray tank there. Um, I did some research, I was trying to figure out what kind of um, valve I wanted to use for the shower. So I ended up going just with, found on Amazon. So this valve is like 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'll be you know, obviously uh, cutting through this and mounting it there. And then the shower, the fitment's not exactly perfect yet, but it's getting pretty close. Um, with my gray tank above ground and in, in the trailer, the uh, top of the shower was just a little too tall, so I had to trim that. I have some, a little bit of final fitment to do to get that to fit perfectly, but it's getting close. Um, the shower drain will go directly down into the gray tank there, and then the gray tank will. I'm gonna cut it out a hole here, and then I'll got that uh, um, the fitting. They'll take us directly outside, and I'll be able to drain it from there. So that's kind of the plumbing setup right now. Um, still a fair amount of work to do, but it's getting pretty close. Should be able to hook everything up and test it here pretty soon. Oh, one last thing, because I end up going with everybody's recommended this. Oxygenic shower head that will obviously you know connect to the faucet I just showed you. Go up, we'll mount it there, and then I plan to do in the shower. Get back here far enough. In the shower, we plan to do one of the um, folding round, one of the you know, round folding um, uh, shower. Um, I guess one of the I guess the, the the shower rod. Sorry, I was looking for that um, shower rod. Kind of fold in, and we'll be able to store some stuff as we're as we're driving around. But that's plumbing setup so far. Um, I'm gonna break here, and then we'll talk over talk about the electrical. All right, 
here's my master electrical plan. Um, both 12 volt and 110. So let's go over the 12 volt stuff first. Uh, my main switch and panel will be right here, which is right where we're standing. Right here, I just want to have be able to open the door and hit switch from anywhere um, coming into the trailer so you have lights and access to everything. So my main switch will be here. Um, I've got multiple lines going everywhere. So um, this first line, this green line, is come up and come across. It's gonna hit um, one, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a second one, but at least one light and then the, then the fan above the shower. So you can see I've ran, um, just coming across, then up that great that great pipe there is going to be all of my 12 volt wires green comes across i'm going to do this i'm keeping everything exposed if i have any issues i can just i can pop it off and get access to all the wire so i've got at least one green wire to that light and then then the the, the fan will be mounted there we'll extend electrical there and i may am doing one more light up in there that i'll just kind of tee off here um so that is that component and then you also see the green the green wire running across there it's all it's, it's loose for right now but outside i'll show you here outside i'm going to do two 12 volt lights up on the nose so when i'm trying to hook up the chair at night or in the morning when it's dark um, gives me good light there so that's one line that's the, that's the green line here the next line is this blue line that is for water pump only i don't want anything else on on that water pump just the water pump by itself so if issues with the water pump i know where it's at so it's going to sense it run across come down here my water pump so that's the blue wire you can kind of see the blue there comes across pop my door comes down goes across my two by three wall cuts down and then follows my water lines down and across and click the water pump so that's that's that line i'm showing you there the next one is this black line I actually ran white wire but this one's gonna come across. I'm gonna have a USB plug here to charge phones or whatever we need to be, and whatever we need to charge. Come across. I'm gonna have a, a 12 volt light um, above the counter, above the uh, the cupboards. I don't have those built yet. The cupboards, and then come across again for another USB charge over here because our beds are in this area, so that way we can charge phones and stuff at night or um, during the day. So that's the white. That's the white line. So that comes across again. Same. This time it comes down to two three. Got some spare wire there to. Um, hook up the USB, comes across, down, comes across the back of the sink, and then up, which got some loose wire there, because that's where my my cupboards will be. Um, up above, they'll have a light that shines down in the kitchen, kitchen area in the sink, and then plenty of extra line there to hook up the USB. <clears throat> Let's come back to our diagram here. And then the next one is this one here so my trailer when i got it, it came with three leds in the ceiling already so i've got one there and then it's kind of hard to see because of the light but oh there we go two in the back so those are already wired from the factory but i've had issues with wiring so i'm going to rewire them based on the existing wire i can find the wall but that is essentially this um this other but this darker blue so it's going to cut across here and then come all the way over here so i'm going to do two more lights um above the cupboards that I've the, that I've, I've had mounted, I, I moved them, I removed them to, to do the wiring. But and that's actually gonna be a yellow, the yellow line. It's gonna be that yellow come across. It's gonna drop down there. This is the switch that that those lights I just showed you they go to. So I'm gonna tie into that, rewire that. Comes across. There'll be one light there underneath my underneath my my my, my cupboards I got. So one light there. Come back over here. And then that yellow line will end here. I've got plenty of extra wire at the bottom there, but that's where that second light will be. They'll be switched, and then they have individual switches on them as well. They're the same lights as this, so they have power, but you also be able to turn them on and off by themselves. So that's the that's that line. And the last 12 volt line is it's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of like this 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 purple, this magenta here. So this one here, I'm gonna eventually do some. Some porch lights and maybe some rocker lights and then i've got an awning i haven't installed yet but i want to be able to do a, a long led rope light by um on that awning so that is going to be the red line and then as it comes across i've got a, a, a usb here for some fans i've got a, i've got a heater there. i use the fans to kind of push the heat out towards the family and then come down here and then on the back i'm gonna do two six inch led 
um, light bars to shine down the on, on, on the ramp or the deck when we get to camp and it just gives us better light for when we're trying to unload and load everything up yeah, when it's dark. So that is the red line. Again, comes out of that, um, that, that tube there. That's gonna be all of my electrical. Red line comes across. It's gonna drop down here. Eventually I'll have switches here for rock lights, um, porch light, and LED awning light. Comes across here. Just follow essentially the whole way down. And then it's gonna drop down here. So what I'm gonna do is I, I don't mind that, that noise. Um, all right, I messed up now. All right, I, li I like to edit that out, but I'll keep it in there. What the hell? All right, so I have this USB port I'm gonna mount in the bottom of my, of my cupboards here. I have these two fans and I use those to blow the heat out. I'm gonna show you here. We let that at night, we vent everything up, vent the, but the roof's safe. But we use that to blow heat in our sleeping area. And so those, um, they always die about halfway through the night. And so that way I'll be able to keep them charged and run them off the battery and we can get good, uh, good airflow all the way through the night. So that's what that red wire is. We'll hook that USB. Um, the bottom of the cabinet, and then that red line's gonna extend, like I was mentioning. Come over here, I haven't done this yet. We're gonna put a switch, some here in the wall, some, some somewhere here in the wall, run some wire up, and then on the outside of the deck, or excuse me, on the outside of the roof, we'll have LEDs there and there that shine, that shine down on the deck. So we have some, have some light at night early in the morning when it's dark and it makes it easier for us to see. So that is going to be my 12 volt so uh, my 12 volt setup. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible but still functional. Uh, nothing too crazy. A couple USB charging ports. Lots of light everywhere. Um, between everything I'm going to have um, one, possibly two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At least seven lights. Maybe with an eighth one up in that, up in that corner. Um, and then uh, that's 12 volt. I'm gonna take a break here, and then we'll go over the uh, the 110 and 115 setup we've got going on. All right, we're back with the 110 and 115 setup. Um, so the 110, anything in this, in the actual red, so find my pencil here. In the red, that's all gonna be 110. So I've got this set up here, and that goes directly to our air conditioner. Um, the air conditioner is just essentially the way it was wired from the previous owner. It was just that big yellow extension cord so I'm gonna have a setup so I can run it on um, either battery power eventually I don't have enough power yet but battery power or run directly off the generator and I'll hook the generator to one of these and then we can kind of switch back and forth which one you want to use and so um, what I ended up getting was this 2000 watt inverter again I don't know if that's enough to run this air conditioner right now but my plan is if I'm gonna run the air conditioner I'll be running off generator um, initially so anything 110 again is going to be in this um, in this red here. So we're going to have one 110 inside. You can see that blue box there. I have not ran the wires yet, but I've mounted quite a few of the boxes. 110 there because this opening right here is going to be where my my fridge and freezer combo goes. I've, I've bought that. Just have not obviously have not installed it yet. So fridge will go there. Um, it'll be ran by that. We're on the cord through the back and we'll. We'll, we'll power there. I also want to have some power outside, um, accessible if we needed. And so I've got that GFI set up with the exterior, um, exterior cover to protect, protect it, prevent it from getting water in there. So that'll be somewhere along this, 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 this front, front wall. So that's kind of what it's showing here. So this GFI outside, and then we're gonna keep going. And then we're gonna have another 110. It's gonna be somewhere in this area, probably right right before the wheel well. I'm gonna have a, a kitchen table that, that uh, piano hinges on this wall and folds up and down. So to, to have access to power there would be nice. So again, I have not run this stuff yet, but just kind of show you what, what the plan is. And then that 110 system will keep running. And then back between our beds, 
will have a 110. Um, or excuse me, just in front, just in front, just in front of that that, that bed there. So kind of pick this up, kind of come here. So just past the heater and in front of that Murphy bed for my kids, down that corner there, we'll probably have access to a, to a 110. Just have again more power available inside if we're you charge things when we run the generator and want to run off the run off the batteries. Come back to the diagram. So that 110 will continue. Come all the way across. And then in the back corner, don't mind the, the jet flying over the top. Um, in this back corner here, back behind the bed. I'm not gonna walk back there, but on the on the back side of that board, we have um, some space there so we'll in the bottom corner on the back side we'll do a 110 plug there and we're gonna run one more all the way across up the front here to just below the kitchen counter i want one more 110 there and then one in the middle of the kitchen um and then one more on the outside so i want we'll have code one two three um these will all be gfis because they're next to water um and so we'll run that line here and have one probably low and then we'll have um, one two three then we'll keep the microwave in this corner so we'll run the microwave primarily off that keep one here keep some access to some in here so we run blenders to, to make drinks or whatever so that is how I've got that set up again I have not ran in at 110 stuff she's been working on 12 volt today that's kind of where we're at with this um, I hope this helped I know some people have, you know looking for different ways to set up electrical but this is the way we're setting up for us because we go to the dunes quite a bit. Um, and so we want you know, available power for things, but didn't want to go over top. My walls are already finished. I don't want to tear into them. So again, everything I'm going to be doing is going to be with this track system. And so it won't um, it won't look too bad, I think. And then, then I always have access to anything electrical. So if I'm having any issues, it makes it easy to diagnose. So again, anywhere you see wires coming down, I'll have that track system there and then there and then across the bottom i'll have a track system going for for all my 110 stuff so i'm gonna run that stuff in, in that in that track system as well but that way it keeps it keeps it going trailer's a mess right now so apologize for that it's uh got stuff everywhere but i figure why i've got it opened um i can actually you know get in and show everybody what i've done um but that's kind of where we're at right now and we'll keep you updated thanks for watching